color pencil. Pick a whatever color you want. Um, you typically hold it like this. I want you to scoot this back so that you're not applying too much pressure and you can have more control for the value. And I want you to just start off slowly and go back and forth with your color, side to side, trying not to stop in the middle. So edge to edge. I typically like to color in a diagonal. You can do more up down or vertical strokes. You come back in here and do little, little tiny circles. Kind of fill in those spots. Now, some people, this is all they do. It's not enough, not really to be seen from the wall. We want it to really have some pop. So what you can do is you can darken in some edges. So you can go back in and bring up the value a bit. See, add some pressure, you're gonna add layers, and then you're gonna blend it out. So I'm taking it and I'm bringing out the corners a little bit, just to add a little bit more visual interest. I do diagonal corners again kind of staying with my same direction and kind of blending it with my little circles okay another way that you can keep from making flat boring color right make it pop is that you can um, go really bold so I want you to add Start off with some pretty heavy handed pressure, but slow down, okay? I want you to go from side to side, either vertically or horizontally, or you wanna do it diagonal, you can. And try to stay with your consistent pressure. Okay, and now let's say I, I went out of the lines a little bit. It happens, mistakes happen. So you can come back and kind of outline it a bit and then blend it back in. So it looks like you did it on purpose. Another thing you can do is after you're finished coloring, you can get your Sharpie back out and you can trace over what you don't really like. Cover is up pretty good, okay? What we don't wanna see when you're using color pencil is that you're doing this business. So we call this feathering. So we see it a lot. Um, we wanna make sure that you're not having these different sections it's kind of distracting in your work. They're all different kind of values. Um, and it's just not as evenly blended as these other two options over here. Next, I wanna show you what to do and what not to do with marker. Okay, with marker, the trick is, no matter really what brand you're using, you want to apply even strokes of color and then the trick is to make it look nice and solid is you allow the ink to dry. And well, this is an illustration marker, but um, let's do it with a let's do it with a Crayola marker over here. Okay, this is kind of a dried out Crayola marker, but same thing, different brand quality here. All right, can you see the individual lines? The trick for marker is, is that you need to allow that ink to dry and then you're going to go in the same direction and you're going to do another coat, another layer, and it looks a whole lot more solid, okay? I can do that back with my illustration marker as well just to give it a little bit more solid. See, that's, that's two layers and that's one layer. So you can sometimes create value as well in different techniques with just the layering method. Okay, nice intense color. What we don't wanna see is that you're doing this kind of business. Okay, no matter what you're coloring with, we see you doing inconsistent coloring, you use dried out markers. Y'all, if it's dried out, take it to the trash. This is not so pretty. And that's how to apply those, both color pencil, a few things, and marker. Let's try this color application on your letter styles. 
what you could do is you could now I mean it's a different shape I want you to go edge to edge stay a light value it's always going to be easier to build up your color rather than try to take some of it away so I'm going to color in this letter and then I also am working with a shadow well maybe I want to add a little bit more values so I add a little bit more pressure here and I want it to fade and blend into the lighter now I did not change color pencils I'm sticking with the same color pencil kind of fade that out all right and then for the shadow part whether you decide to do it with sharpie or you want to do it with color that's up to you that could be an option okay here's where you would go more bold okay as long as you have a different value it's a darker value because it is a shadow all right then it should be pretty good so i'm going pretty bold here lots of pressure heavy-handed this one's even darker than this side okay then if i wanted to come back in with my sharpie and maybe i go with the ultra fine sharpie and i'm just going to give it a little bit more emphasis on the line you could do that a little bit of a shadow there so I like to stay consistent with my shadows um, I think it's always easier to think of my shadows on my left so here would be my you know Vincent van Gogh Sun here all right and it's casting the light and your shadows should always be opposite so as long as you're consistent with all your letters, with your shadows being opposite, you should be fine. Next, I've drawn two other letter styles. Um, and I want to show you a marker color pencil technique that can look pretty cool. And so I have already done marker as a solid base coat, if you will. Um, and so then you have to decide really maybe test on a separate paper what will look good on top of that um you could try a red i know it looks kind of brown it's a crimson lake okay but you can try like a red you could also try maybe a green so those those might look pretty good on top of there and so you're going to start adding some shading an emphasis on that as well okay so again um, I'm gonna th I'm gonna use green and I'm going to again just stay consistent with my light source here I'm going to um, start with really light pressure and build up my color so I'm gonna just go right on top of that color I'm going to have some light pressure Bring it all the way down. Again, it's going to be a whole lot easier to build up. Let me zoom in on this letter. Okay. Build up that pressure. I'm going to go around a bit. I am. I'm not holding it down here. Okay. This is your writing grip. A lot of you add way too much pressure when you're writing. So bring it back a notch. You could also try an overhand grip. Um, but we're working small letters, probably just this kind of grip where you're holding it more down back here. All right, so I'm going to fade this out. There will also be a little bit of a shadow on the inside that's opposite because it's inside of the letter and but still opposite of my light source here. So it will cast a shadow on the inside and I know some of these lines are poking through you can cover that up with Sharpie later on which you'll see me do or maybe not maybe I'll change my mind maybe I decide I like it or I can just make a really dark outline see on camera I think I need to go a little bit darker add a little bit more pressure again building up that color Building it up and really heavy pressure on the 
Notice I rotate my color pencil every once in a while. That helps keep it from wearing down just on one side. The camera gets a little shaky on my art table. All right, I'm gonna round that out. Add some darker pressure here. I wanna blend this out. I don't want it to look too obvious. All right, and I'm gonna support that idea on the other side. I'm gonna fade this out a little bit more. And uh, there you have it. Maybe go a little bit lighter. You don't want to lighter everywhere, but just a little bit lighter. One more thing for the letter D. Or really, I mean, any letter that you're doing. Um, what would be cool is that you use um, a white oil pastel. And you can add a highlight really nicely on top of color pencil or marker. It works on both. Get a, get a piece of scrap paper. If your white is kind of dirty like this, then you're just going to use the scrap paper and kind of rub off all of whatever gunk that is so you can have some apply some clean color. Okay, this would also be great um, if I had paint pens or something, but this, this will work. So we're gonna use the oil pastel and I'm gonna add a highlight so our letters really look good when you add that contrast. So I'm going to add a highlight. I still want it to be kind of more of a bubble shape, not just a line. So you just give it a little bit of a pop there. All right. And I, then I want some more contrast. So after I add my highlight, I think I am going to come back here and add some Sharpie or reinforce the Sharpie if you had the Sharpie and go ahead and outline and maybe add a little bit thickness to support the the weight of the shadow there add that and there you go I think that gives it some more pop I like that better Anyway, I'm gonna do a little color test on a separate piece of paper and decide, make those artistic decisions, okay? Maybe a red would look good. That's a crimson red. It's a little too brown. Crimson Lake. And you know what, maybe I'll just go with the purple. I think this is gonna show up a little bit better. So you do have to kind of play around with your color sometimes and decide you know, what it is that you like. So again, staying consistent with my shadow, uh, sorry, my uh, light source, so my shadow is consistent. Um, I want to build up layers. Again, start with a light, light value, and you can build it up later. So these are more bubbly, um, if you were trying to, or you're turning these shapes into forms, right? So you're trying to make them look three-dimensional. Build it up on the, um, the legs of the H to bring out the color a little bit more. Keep the camera from shaking. Bring out the color a little bit more. Fade it into that pink or whatever color you're using. Just giving you examples. A little crumb. All right, I'm gonna go a little bit darker, more pressure, more pressure. More pressure, more pressure. I don't wanna overdo it, but that does help that contrast. Do -do -do. Do, do, do. I'll bring this out just a little bit more. And then maybe I'd have a little bit here to support that color in the middle. And then once you're happy with that, grab your Sharpie. I'm gonna bring this out just right on top of there like that. Support. 
fix your boo-boos. If you already did the Sharpie part, then, I mean, you can always go back over parts. So I have a basic outline. I want to add a little bit more depth, though, to even my shadow on those left sides. So that would be there, and it would be here, and it might be here as well. And then if I wanted to come back and also do um, a little highlight with our oil pastel. A little, oh, I like that. Okay, so you're going to kind of figure out what you like. Make some artic artistic choices there. Um, have some fun with your letters. <laughs> 